Well, so we, we talked about, you know, what are the advantages and disadvantages with both. So monolith uh, will, uh, you know, it has eventually phased out in, in last, uh, you know, decade, I would say. And uh, more and more people are going towards the microservices oriented architecture. But again, uh, with this, there even more uh, comes as SOA. What is SOA? Okay. So uh, this question arised in last uh, session, I remember. So just to give you one clear uh, understanding of this, just assume that you are running an e-commerce company, right? And it has multiple applications, uh, which is basically handling uh, different types of uh, requirements, right? So your e-commerce company will have one is um, seller, where seller can get onboarded. Then you have pricing. Then you have uh, order. Then you have a checkout. Okay, so this is one particular set of services catering to different different needs, okay? So this is entirely responsible for order, this is entirely responsible for pricing, this is entirely, uh, you know, for uh, seller, and this is uh, for checkout. So this is nothing but a uh, service-oriented architecture. You can call this as a service-oriented architecture because each service is responsible for a particular uh, thing. Now, where comes the uh, microservice? So microservice uh, concept is used if, Suppose you have uh, different types of pricing applications, right? So assume that I'll just uh, do one thing. I'll just um, clear this uh, order. Let me. So suppose this is the order, right? Now the order can be split into the multiple uh, uh, things. So suppose the order has one uh, service called fulfillment, then inventory, then something um, status, right? So these three applications are there, which basically constitute order. Okay. So if you view service-oriented architecture for this, there is a service. This is service one, service two, service three, service four. Now the service three is you know split into multiple microservices now. Okay. So for an outer side world, for an enterprise, right? The, the the abstraction is that I'll simply say, okay, this is my auto service. I don't really care where whether they are going to talk to each other or get the details from each other. But for me, the order details is what matters and I'll get the order um, uh, fulfilled uh, accordingly. So you have split the order service into multiple microservices here. And uh, for outer, outer world, it constitutes only one service. And this is where the concept comes. The SOA is still uh, in, 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 uh, in, in, in terms of uh, the, the terminology have been, uh, you know, a little uh, less used these days because, you know, people try to focus more and more on the microservices world. But if you think in a, a, at a bigger picture or enterprise level, we are still following the uh, SOA architecture in terms of getting the services done or uh, uh, getting our, um, you know, uh, services fulfilled. So the, the internal split is what we are focusing and this is what we are calling the microservices architecture. So we have split the order uh, into multiple uh, services. Okay, so this, this is what actually, if you see the differences or uh, the, the abstraction layer, which we use for microservices versus the SOA architecture. So monolith is something which uh, basically is, instead of entire thing, you have one single standalone application which does everything. No, it will have, um, code for um, seller, it will code up for pricing. Uh, you have lots of controllers, services, repository, everything of use, war file, and uh, handling everything. So that is what the monolith. So generally the comparison uh, in an in interview is asked about the SO, uh, monolith versus microservice. There is no uh, uh, much difference is being asked with, you know, with respect to uh, SOA versus microservices because both goes hand in hand. It's like, you know, brother, sister, but monolith versus microservices, just like you know, North Pole, South Pole, you can think of that as okay. So SOA and microservices is basically complementing each other, and uh, monolith and microservices is basically the opposite of each other. You can think of that, okay. So they will have their own single Jenkins pipeline for deployment, building, validation. But this will have multiple deployment cycles, multiple teams, dev team. One will be the fulfillment, one will be the inventory, one will be the status, and they will deploy their own set of applications through own release cycle, their own deployment cycle validations and everything. The other will be doing their own release cycle and everything. They only need to make sure that the contract what they have signed, that okay, hey, these are the API which are available. There are any change, you have to basically 
let other services know that there is going to be a v1 to v2 version 2 release of api and that's why you might be seeing most of the uh, api starts with v1 slash v2 slash we will talk about the best practices for designing the restful web services but uh, you might be seeing that you know they make it backward compatible as well that you know if you're still using the v1 apis you can go ahead and use it but there are v2 apis are available as well and which you can consume it and have a better uh, control over it basically right any questions